Insidious, the Red Door is the fifth film in the Insidious saga and the first to continue the original story with the Lamberts in over a decade. This time, little Dalton's off to college and thanks to a hypnotist has forgotten all about the further. But just because you forget about something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So, obviously, it comes back with a vengeance. I've always had a weird relationship with this film and franchise as a whole, and like a lot of other things, I have a hot take with the series. I mean, my favorite is probably one of the two that everybody else hates, Insidious Chapter 3, which was more or less something that did the same exact thing as the first Insidious movie, but out of the entire saga, the third movie was probably the most subtle out of them all. A lot of the ghosts were ideas and things that you see off in the corner of your eye and off in the distance. A lot of it was sounds and noise, and there was a real buildup of tension in that film. While the rest of these movies, everything's in your face. That is the worst thing that you can do, in my opinion, with a paranormal horror film. Plus, I mean, I always held the belief that Patrick Wilson can't really act, but uh, I will at least admit that over the years he has gotten a lot better in that department. I'll also say that it is technically nice to see the Lamberts again, because whether I liked the series or not, I cannot ignore the fact that these characters were the heart and the soul of the films, and a big part of why the series has lasted as long as it has in the first place. The prequels focus more on the Elise character and her past, and she's also a big part of why the series has thrived. But even though the Lamberts are back again, it's hard to avoid a few things here. Like, even the Lamberts can't save the series from fizzling out. There's just no real sustenance in this movie. It doesn't really add anything new to the series whatsoever, other than to tell the audience that, hey, these characters are still alive, they're still kicking, and, you know, every now and again, they're still dealing with ghosts from the further. It is nice to see Ty Simpkins in a more grown-up role, though, and his sub-story about art and drawing inspiration for his art through his past was all good. I mean, that was a perfect lead-up. Plus, it also had some creepy moments associated with it, for sure. And as a plus, Ty Simpkins weirdly <laughs> kind of looks like Patrick Wilson now that he's grown up a little bit, and I don't know, I kind of find that to be a welcome coincidence. The main story going on here, or at least what they draw most of their narrative from, was at the end of Insidious 2, Patrick Wilson and Ty Simpkins character decide to wipe their memory of the further and everything that happened there in order to move on with their life and, you know, keep the ghosts hidden. But this unintentionally caused a rift between these characters and Patrick Wilson can't remember literally anything because he's basically got an insane short-term memory loss and Ty's character just he can't remember anything about being 10 years old. So there's this whole distant parenting dynamic thing going on in the film, which I guess was fine, but it felt unnecessary to tell the truth. They needed so much time to explain this to the audience that the movie just kind of slowed down to a halt and nothing really happened in it for what feels like half of the film. Now I will admit that a good chunk of the scares were effective. I jumped quite a few times. Yeah, most of the scares are just, you know, cheap, predictable jump scares, as per usual with most of the Insidious films, but I'm one of the few people out there that don't actually mind that. It's all part of the experience. Now, I do prefer smarter scares that stay with you and keep you awake half the night out of fear of what might lurk in the shadows, but these temporary jump scares are also fine. I don't mind them. They do what they seek out to do, and as I always say, that deserves its own set of praise as well. What I'm having the most problems with in this fifth film in the Insidious Saga is that it was not needed. It just wasn't. There's character development, I guess. You know, there's bonding between an estranged relationship, like I said, but they made that estrangement up for the movie. So at the end of the day, I scored Insidious The Red Door a C plus letter grade. Final overall score of 69%. 69 out of 100 possible stars, which coincidentally was the same exact score that I gave the first Insidious film, believe it or not. But what about you guys though? Have you seen Insidious The Red Door? Are you a fan of the franchise? If so, let me know what you thought about this movie in the comment section down below and how you rank it among all the rest of the Insidious films. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with the next review. And until then, peace out.